Looking for something small, stylish, fuel efficient, and fun to drive? Well, the new Toyota Yaris IA might be just the car for you. Coming up next is a little review talking about some reasons why this small car is definitely one that shouldn't be overlooked. So let's start off with the styling and talk a little bit about the background of this car, which is pretty apparent through the styling. So when you first look at this car, you can tell it's small, but you can also tell that it looks a whole lot like a Mazda. Now the reason for this is that this car was actually developed by Mazda, but sold in the US as a Toyota. Now to start, this car actually has a pretty complicated history. So developed by Mazda, right, as the Mazda 2, new Mazda 2, and then it moved on and was sold in the US as a Scion IA. Now, Scion obviously went bust last year and then Toyota rebranded it as a Yaris IA and now it's sold as a Toyota. And you can reflect that in the styling because you look at this car and you know it's a Mazda. You look at the taillights, it's pure Mazda. The way that they're shaped, the way that they're colored, you can tell immediately that it looks a lot like a Mazda 3 in the way it's designed. When you look at the front end, it's very controversial but I quite, quite frankly like it. It's very aggressive. It kind of looks like a mean fish because you have that very wide grill that's very prominent in most Toyota products. And the headlights kind of angle in, making it look like a fish that's kind of like sweeping along the bottom of the ocean, in my opinion. Moving on to the side, you have two lines that flow along the door that split halfway through the door. Um, the, uh, the driver door, they split and then continue going on in two separate lines throughout the passenger door on the rear trunk lid of the car. Now, those lines are very similar to the lines that you see in a lot of Mazda products, and that shows a lot of lineage. It makes the car look sporty, makes it look flowing along the side of the car, and I think overall this car looks very good. Completing the style is the standard 16-inch alloy wheels that make this car look really nice, make it look a bit higher quality than some other cars in this segment. I really appreciate Toyota throwing in some alloy wheels as standard. Now let's move on to the mechanical features of this car. So this car has a 1.5 liter four cylinder engine. Just let that sit, 1.5 liters, four cylinders. That's not a lot, that's pretty puny. And the figures are pretty puny as well, 106 horsepower and 103 pound feet of torque. But one figure that are, isn't small is the fuel consumption. So your fuel economy figures are actually very, very impressive. 32 miles per gallon city, 40 miles per gallon highway. Now that's extremely impressive. On this test drive, I've been averaging about 35 miles to the gallon in Northern Virginia suburban traffic. It's terrible traffic, and the fact that this car gets 35 MPG is actually pretty incredible. Now this engine is linked up to a six-speed automatic in this application. You can also get it with a six-speed manual. I would hands down go for the manual. It would make this car so much more fun to drive. The automatic's good, it shifts quick, and when you put it in manual mode, it's actually a pretty slick shifting manual. Uh, but I mean, still, I'd rather have the clutch, I'd rather have the real deal, you know? It would just make it so much better. Now, one thing I don't really like about this automatic transmission is that it seems to hold the gears a bit longer. I know why they're doing that. They're trying to make the best of 106 horsepower, but there's some times where I feel like it's excessive. Like I'll be going down a hill and I'll be done accelerating, right? But it'll keep the car at like 4,000 RPM a few seconds longer than it really needs to. So I do wish it was a little bit quicker to catch on with what I'm doing as a driver. Now, let's talk about the driving experience of the IA. This car is a blast. Oh my God, is this car fun to drive. I had been looking forward to driving this car for a very long time just because I had speculated that it being developed by Mazda, it was gonna be an absolute blast to drive and oh my God, was I right. This steering is incredible. It is so unbelievably precise, like super darty. As soon as you turn in, there's a teeny, teeny bit of lag on center, but as soon as you dial in some lock, boom, you just dart exactly where you want to go. It's super communicative, super tight. I really like the feedback. It's not overly heavy. A lot of people associate a sporty drive with heavy steering. Not the case here. This steering is actually fairly light, but it's very, very communicative, very direct, a boatload of fun. 
This car is an absolute blast to put through some corners. The turning circle is incredible, and just spinning this wheel around in town is super easy to do. And then once you're on some back roads, you can really push it and have a lot of fun. This car, the chassis communicates everything to you. You can tell it was developed by Mazda, because a lot of Toyotas don't drive anywhere near as good as this thing does. I've driven cars that have been three times as expensive that don't communicate to the road to the driver as well as this car does. It's absolutely phenomenal. Now, one thing that would make this car a bit more fun to drive would be better tires. Now, these are the 16-inch alloys wrapped with standard tires. I mean, they're nothing special, and you can tell when you push it through a corner. Now, I went through a corner not too fast, and I could hear some tire squeal. Now, you get to the limit quick, which is kind of fun, but in terms of handling capability, you're not going to be able to push it too, too fast without losing grip. Now, let's talk a little bit about the ride. The ride in this car is actually not that bad. It's firm and it's tied down, but it's not punishing. Like, it isolates the bumps pretty well. You can feel the bumps, but it doesn't feel like you're bouncing all over the place. It doesn't feel like it disrupts the overall quality of the ride when you hit something in the road. So, is it super luxurious? Of course not. Is it nice? Yeah, it's not that bad at all. I have no complaints in terms of the ride. Now, I mean, let's talk a little bit about the interior of this car, some of the features that you get. So the interior of this car, straight Mazda. It looks very similar to the interior of the Mazda Miata. You have these rotary um, air vents that look very nice. It's very retro, very modern. A lot of younger buyers are gonna absolutely fall for this interior. And I love how along the dashboard you have some hard materials on the top. Then you have this uh, little air vent. The whole bar looks like an air vent bar. There's one little air vent in it, but then you have this chrome strip that keeps running throughout the dashboard. And under that, you have a very nice soft touch material that is complemented by this very nice blue stitching. Overall, it's very attractive. You have, I wouldn't call it carbon fiber, like carbon fiber by a stretch. Like it's really not carbon fiber at all. But you have that trim that looks kind of interesting. It's not that bad. Now, let's talk about some of the features. You have a seven inch little display up here. I almost said touchscreen, that's why I paused. But if you saw the Audi review, I'm not falling back into that. It's not a touchscreen. I got it right. It's actually controlled by this little rotary knob down on the center console right behind where the shifter is. Now, is it easy to use? I wouldn't go so far to say that it's easy to use. I mean, you can figure it out. I do wish it was a touchscreen. The interface itself is pretty clear, but I feel like you have to scroll through a few too many menus to get to what you want, like to change the radio station. There's no dial for that. You gotta go and you gotta go to audio and then you gotta use the rotary knob to change the radio. I mean, is it hard to do? Again, no, it's really not. But why add the extra steps when it's something that could have been done so easily? You know, I mean, that's my little gripe with that. Other than that, the knob is located perfectly. I can just rest my hand here and there's actually a little um, piece of plastic that fits right into the palm of my hand and that I can control the knob and it's actually um, very good. It has a nice tactile feel and I really like it overall. There's a few other buttons. You do have a physical volume knob which is nice. You have a home button, a back button, and a nav button. That's right. You can actually buy navigation for this car. It comes, doesn't actually come as a package. You just get it as a little SD card that you can then plug in and there you go. You have navigation in your $17,000 Toyota Yaris IA, which is honestly really phenomenal. Now, the seats in this car, straight Mazda, I think they look really good. You have this blue cloth insert, you have uh, black side bolsters. They're pretty comfortable. I have pretty decent thigh support. There's not adjustable lumbar support. It's, very, it's just manual adjustment, nothing special, but they're not uncomfortable by any means. Now, when you look at the gauge cluster, straight Mazda again, you have a very small uh, digital tachometer Honestly, me being a driver, I like to have a bigger tack. This one's pretty small. If I were driving stick shift, it'd get kind of annoying having to look at that, but obviously I shift by ear. You have a massive center speedo, and then to the right of that, you have a little um, multifunction display. Display, um, displays fuel economy, your trip computer, gas, um, outside temperature, yada, yada, yada. You have steering wheel controls that control all these functions. You have Bluetooth. Generally pretty good stuff. Cruise control, not bad at all. Not bad at all in terms of features. Now, the back seat, it's kind of tight, not too big. Sitting behind myself, I'm six foot two, I can fit. Headroom's pretty decent. If you're over six feet tall, you might brush your head a little bit, but overall it's not that bad. Sitting behind the passenger seat in a normal position, you actually have pretty decent legroom. And then in the trunk, you have 13 and a half cubic feet of space, which for a car of this class is actually pretty decent. You can fit a lot of stuff back there. I was actually pretty surprised.
So a few other features of this interior, you have manual climate control, which honestly, I mean, it's kind of to be expected at this price point. It works well, the AC blows cold, but of course it's a new car, of course the AC is gonna blow cold. I mean, they're big high, mounted high up. They don't look super fancy, but they're very easy to use. So no complaints on my part. Now let's talk a little bit more about this powertrain and just how good it is. So for 106 horsepower and 103 pound-feet of torque, it feels decently quick. It does zero to 60 in about eight and a half seconds, which is hardly fast, but it feels pretty good. Now you're only lugging around 2,400 pounds. That's nothing. So you actually have a pretty decent power to weight ratio and it actually gets off the line pretty good. It feels a lot quicker than it is. Obviously the six-speed manual would make it feel a whole lot more fun. Now, overall, let's talk about why this car isn't really selling. A lot of people don't really look to Toyota for teeny cars. You're just gonna pay the little premium and get the Corolla, to be honest. But considering the fact that this car starts at $15,900, roughly, that's an insane deal considering all the equipment you get. You have air conditioning, you have a seven inch display, you have the rotary knob, you have sport mode, you have the steering wheel controls, you have the little, um, gauge cluster that has a lot of nifty features, plenty of room for you and your friends, and a car that drives a million times better than a Corolla, a million times better than really any other Toyota product. The thing's absolutely incredible in terms of the way it drives. And I think that's really what sells it. This car has an unmistakable personality. You hop in here and it's eager. The engine wants to rev. This thing wants to be driven fast. It's like a teeny little dog that's barking at your leg. It's just like, come on, play with me, play with me. It's kind of like that. This car wants to get up, it wants to have fun, and it's just a fun little thing to just chuck around some corners, go fast, get crazy fuel economy. As I th said, I'm getting 35 and a half miles to the gallon right now, which have absolutely mind-blowing efficiency. And honestly, I think it's a real shame that this car doesn't sell more than it does, because it is a really, really solid contender. I would buy this car over basically any other small car on the market. Well, sub, like super compacts. Like I'd probably get like a, I don't know, I'd probably get a Honda Civic if I was looking at just a compact. But for a car like this, sub, like a really small car, I would totally get this over competition like the Hyundai Accent, the Honda Fit. I mean, it is a shame that this car doesn't come in a hatchback. I feel like if they introduced this car with a hatchback version, it would absolutely nail it. Now, let's talk about a few of the downsides. Now, this being a Mazda, road noise is a little bit more pronounced than I would like. I'm doing 50 miles an hour right now, and you can definitely hear some tire roar. There's not a whole lot of wind noise, but you're just overall not super isolated. And then, other than that, when you do have hard materials, like they're hard and they're kind of chintzy feeling, especially up on the upper bits of the dashboard. But then again, I don't know anyone that's gonna hop into their car and go, oh man, I really wish that was a little bit softer. I don't think anyone goes around squeezing their dashboards for the fun of it, you know? People don't do that, so you're never gonna notice. Overall, it's a very, very good product. Thanks again to Orisman Chantilly Toyota and especially Arlo, one of the sales reps there. They hooked me up with this car. They've hooked me up with various other cars. Great dealership, we bought a car there. Flawless experience. I definitely recommend checking them out if you're looking for a Toyota product. Huge shout out to them, I really do appreciate it. This car has been an absolute blast to drive. I low key kinda want one now. This thing is just an absolute blast. I mean, for $16,000 give or take, this car stickered at 17.5. Unbelievable features, unbelievable value for money, unbelievable fun. Unbelievable, like honestly, quality is very good. I am blown away by this car. Honestly, if you're looking at a car that competes, don't go without driving this thing. Check it out because I guarantee you, you're gonna love it. Thanks again for watching Motor Minds. I hope you guys tune into our next episode. Please check out some of the other videos we have up there. I'm sure you'll find them informative and engaging as always. Please subscribe, like, share, find us on social media, and check out motorminesproductions.com. I'll see you watching our next video.